I'd like to welcome you to the Wheeler series on COVID-19. It is my greatest pleasure to introduce you, Professor Yunus, and it, I'm delighted that you have been able to come a second time to London Business School and that I have a second opportunity to talk to you. Really grateful. I, I'm you delighted come. to be in your program. I'm very happy. Thank you, Professor Yunus. Uh, you're someone who needs no introduction. You won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006 for founding the Grameen Bank, which has helped millions of people to come out of poverty. And uh, so it's, a, uh, it's great that we get to talk to you. And also, uh, for, I want to share that I personally have always had interest in innovation, in particular in innovative business models, and also uh, I've had interest in social impact, as ha do many of my colleagues and students and uh, members of our London Business School community who are spread all over the world. We're a very international community, and there are also kindred spirits who are outside of our community who have uh, deep interests in innovation, uh, uh, innovative business models, and in particular, social impact innovation. So we're really keen to hear from you, your thoughts on, um, in particular, what is happening right now with the whole pandemic. One thing that we know is this is a huge disruption. I've heard people saying that this could be worse than the Great Depression, the bubonic plague, and many uh, great famines all rolled into one. So it's a huge disruption to our lives. I also uh, know that often necessity is the mother of invention. And so what I uh, wanted to ask you about is, given that we are facing this huge disruption, what opportunities are you seeing for innovative business models or new ways of doing things that might emerge and help us to battle this one? Okay, well, thank you. Uh, let me uh, give it a try, see how to cover those issues you mentioned. First, hello to all the members of your community. I'm delighted to be with you. Uh, the coronavirus and the, um, the subsequent uh, destruction that it's brought, uh, catastrophe that it's brought to the whole world, uh, leads to many issues. Uh, it's not only it is collapsing the entire system, uh, we'll actually uh, have to, we have to begin from the sketches, from the leftovers of the entire system. Uh, it will be a heap of uh, uh, destruction. It's, uh, pieces have to be picked up uh, to be, make a new beginning. And there the fundamental question will come. Do we take all the pieces to re rebuild them or we throw some pieces away? We don't need it anymore. Uh, we pick and choose which piece we want, which piece we don't want and make very clear right from the beginning uh, because this is a great opportunity uh, to decide what kind of uh, structure we want to build, what kind of world we want to build. So those are the kind of things. What coronavirus immediately has revealed, uh, something very important. After many, many years of our struggle in the human uh, race that we have been working together, to come closer together to each other. And we are talking about the multilateralism and the, uh, taking decisions together, gathering uh, of the leaders to make sure that uh, we work together in consensus or uh, some kind of uh, consensus building process is built in. But the, when the crisis came, when a common enemy like coronavirus came, suddenly we reverted to tribalism. We became tribes. We were always trying to protect our own tribe and some very aggressively, it, mm -hmm. telling you that we don't care for you anymore. And that we have seen under the leadership of uh, Trump, uh, how ugly it can become. And the institution that we built so that we can, uh, under those circumstances, come together under one umbrella, think together and take actions. We didn't do that. We attacked them. And again, President Trump has done very brilliantly doing that, 
destroying their very fundamental of the whole, uh, the commander in chief of the whole uh, struggle for the uh, coronavirus war. And he attacked and he, he withdrew his money. He said, we don't want your money. We don't want to give your money. So the those WHO. are the kind of things. Yeah, WHO, WHO. So these are the kind of things reveal that you see our tribalism has not ended. It comes back in the crisis period. So that's a very bad sign that we have not still came together for a common enemy. This is no controversy about it. And they're suffering about it. But they're very per institutional, even all, whatever weakness, if they had any weakness, whatever weakness, this is not the time to withdraw your support from that, if you stay behind it and make sure we can uh, follow it up, make it happen. So this is one revelation that uh, this thing brought in. And the other one is uh, all, the, all the destruction and everything. I see this as a great opportunity. You see, the world that we are coming from right uh, before Corona was not a good world. We were, we were standing on the street, we are shouting on the path, saying say that we don't want that because this is, this is the world which is under the threat of destruction and sooner or later will be over. So we are at the tip of that uh, destruction with the very end of the road. We are talking about the environment, for example. We are saying we have a very few years left on this planet. We are talking about whether our children will have a life, just these teenagers, and do our grandchildren have any life? We don't have any idea. We are sure that they don't have any life left. So we are in the end of the path. Uh, on the environmental side. And then you talk about the wealth concentration, all the wealth of the world concentrated in fewer and fewer hands, and the bulk of the population, 99% of the population is nothing practically. So what kind of world that we built? Then we are talking about the massive unemployment uh, created through artificial intelligence, and it's coming and it's moving very fast ahead. So these are the, all the few threats among many other threats and that we have. And the threats, uh, we have already revealed ourselves, the threat of our health system. Many of the, now when the crisis came, we, we found out we don't have a health system. It was just a fake structure. There's no content. Look at Bangladesh, look at many other countries. There is no public health system. And whatever public health system we built, we are, uh, when the time comes, we see it's empty. It's, it's not something, that is capable of handling those things. So this is the world we are coming from. You can have a whole long list of it. Professor Yunus, you are an academic yourself and uh, you uh, started out as an academic and then you uh, went back to Bangladesh and uh, founded the Grameen Bank. Question I have for you is, what can academics do? There are researchers, uh, certainly at London Business School, my colleagues and I, and um, researchers all over the world in many different kinds of institutions who want to figure out a way in which they can do something that would be uh, in the right direction to help us get over this pandemic. What thoughts do you have? Now we have a choice. Should we go back or we take a new path? A path which will not have environmental degradation, which will not have wealth concentration, which will not have uh, unemployment as a threat coming to us. So I talk about three zeros. I said, can we build this world of three zeros? Zero wealth concentration, zero uh, environment uh, net carbon emission, zero uh, unemployment, and all the kind of thing you can see. You, you design a world and go there. This is what we want to go. And this is the time your school, your student, your uh, alumni will be working on that. that do, what kind of world we want? So this is a question everybody has to answer. Do we want to go back? And my answer is absolutely no. No way. We'll rather suffer through this period because we are free. Our environment is wonderful right now. You look anywhere. We never had this environment before. And the wealth concentration still remains, but its processes are stopped because the businesses, the business or the mechanism by which the wealth concentration took place. Financial institutions were the one with the vehicles to make those. They are not functioning anymore. So that concentration cannot take place. For them, it's a kind of a, 
uh, relief that those processes are not working. Unemployment, everybody's unemployed. So the question of creating new unemployment is not there. So we are in a tabula rasa. So here we can start fresh. What would be the elements of that fresh? My suggestion is to make the thinking process easier. My suggestion would be we first just to agree on whatever world we want to build, whatever institutions, policies we want to build, it must be based on social consciousness. That should be the central focus. Social consciousness, anything which is not designed around social consciousness has to be discarded. If it is, doesn't have social consciousness, throw it out. It's a poison. Don't let it come in. This environmental consciousness. Does it satisfy your environmental consciousness? Anything which is against environment, throw it out. This is the time. Why should you go back and replenish their uh, uh, power to go back again, do the same destruction and get to the, do, kill us in a different way? rather than the way nature has done it to the coronavirus. At least we can fight, we have a common enemy. There we don't have a common enemy, we fight with each other because they have the power to take a grab everything. So these are the kind of things. So, so we, I put social consciousness, environmental consciousness as the central deciding principle where we begin. And there we start looking at, do we follow the same economic theory that we are coming from? Do we have the same business policy and the same business ideas that we are coming from? Who created all those problems? The problem, the list of problems is that businesses created those problems. So why should we revive those businesses which created those problems? If you say climate is not, the business is not at fault, somebody did it, God has done it, government has done it, or some other guy has done it, identify them. We don't want them in our boat anymore. We're picking up the people who will be supporting us, our life and future, so that our grandchildren will be grateful that they have a beautiful life ahead of them. This is the challenge for us, and do that. And to make it easy for everybody, I will suggest that as an exercise, as a fun thing to do, imagine the world that we want to create. Just imagine, you don't have to work anything. Just imagine. This is a good time to imagine. What are the things we should have? What are the things we don't have? This is the kind of world we want. And what are the elements that you want to see happening there? What are the outcomes that you want to make of it? Once you start imagining, you see, a consensus in this imagination may emerge. If it does, then go back. When the time comes, decision has to be made, you make those decisions. Should we bring these bailout packages to restart all the fossil fuel industry? Should we? We say, no, bailout packages are not relevant for us. This is because this is the guy who created all the problem for us. So we'll stop that. Then say this is not one. You, if you want to survive, survive when you're not with our money. This is our new money, new money for the new world. New money should not be used for the generating the old destructive power. Very interesting. So yeah. Sure. Why should we yeah, do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. If if yeah. You, if you want to stop it, this is the time to stop it. So I'll stop here. And let you. Uh, follow up any of the points that I made. I think, uh, I mean, that is deep advice that, in fact, in this crisis, you are seeing an opportunity, which is to Absolutely. reimagine Fantastic opportunity. And, and rethink. And the sure. question I have for you, and I think in particular, uh, because of who you are, you could help us with this question. So like you pointed out early, uh, leaders are not necessarily uh, speaking with social consciousness at this moment. And then you ask that all of us should reimagine uh, how the world needs to be. Now, the question I have is, um, and I think you can speak about this because when you founded the Grameen Bank, there was no banking for the poor really. Banking was for the rich. So you came from somewhere where there was, um, that need was not being met. The question is that individuals reimagining how, how can one make up for uh, the fact that leaders may not be taking us in the right direction? Are you seeing a different uh, way of doing things altogether to achieve that new world? Very much, very much. Yeah. In the building of the new world, I place individual role is the most important role. Government doesn't have any role. Why should government play any role? We are the one who decide what the world would be. 
If I don't want to run something, I don't. All we are asking, you are using our money. Don't put the money into the factories, into the com companies who create problems for us. Social consciousness. So the money bailout packages has to go through a screening process. That's all I'm saying. The screening process, is it socially conscious uh, decision? And Am I destroying can, the planet? Who can do the screening? Who, who, in your view, would be the best parties to do the screening? Uh, you, me, uh, you as an academic, you say these are the screening process. Raise the voice. If you keep quiet, as you said, okay, we have to build, this is a good company, employed so many thousand people. There's only criteria, so many thousand people, nothing else. So I'm not interested in so many thousand people. They, nobody has a job yet. So I'm interested in whether I should be putting money into a company which will be destroying me. My future of my children, future of my grandchildren, future of my race. It will be done, finish. It will not survive on this planet. We were talking about this being the last decade, the 20s of decade, the decade of 20s. Last this is the decade which has the last chance. This is before the coronavirus. This is the description we are making. The decade with last chance. If we don't do anything in this decade, we are finished. It's a matter of time. It will be just drip, 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 and it will go over. And it's getting worse and worse. Coronavirus suddenly stopped everything. It didn't let us go through that. If you follow those old ideas, old thinking, old structures, we follow the same path of destruction. Let's forget. So let's forget about all the old paths, all the old ideas. Get fresh ideas. And that's where I've been pleading that at least if you have businesses, that businesses have to be two kinds, not one kind. Businesses to make money, if you want to make money, yes, this is personal interest. You make money. I'll make guidelines how you make money. Not to, it's a socially consciousness, social consciousness driven making money. Not a random making money. I can kill anybody to make money. Not like that. So all I want to do, if it is a business, is it a socially conscious business? Are you aware of the society? And then I say, there's another kind of business, which is driven only with the social business, nothing else. Social consciousness. That's what we call social business, where I'm not interested in making profit. It's my decision, personal decision. It's your decision, your personal decision. We have to play the role, collective interest and the self-interest. Business today is self-interest driven. I said, then you have to balance it. You have to have a social business driven, social consciousness driven business. That's a social business where I don't want to make money. I want to make sure my public health system works. I create my own public health system because I know that government may, may not end up doing things, but I can do it. I have the ability, I'm an entrepreneur, I know how to deal with things. I do it in a social conscious way. One thing that's happening with the coronavirus is that a lot of countries are going to be in need of uh, funds. And um, there are also countries who are going to be needing to have their debts written off. And there's a growing list of such countries. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how these issues should be dealt with. What is the financial system? Financial system is simply a vehicle to mop up the money for people to mop up the money so that they can channel to one single direction. That's not a social consciousness driven institution. So we have to build a new kind of a banking system, which is socially conscious. Every dollar I put in, every dollar I invest, is it harming the society? It's benefiting the society. It's, been, it's definitely benefiting the industry, which you're supporting with your loan, with your whatever financial benefit you give to them. But is it beneficial to the planet? Is it beneficial to the society at large? So we have to bring this consciousness again and again to decide what kind of uh, financial system. We talk about inclusive financial system. And I said, this is a very funny word, inclusive financial system. Inclusive means a kind of evasive word. You do a little bit and forget everything else. I said, no, that's not the real issue. The yes, real issue is non-exclusion. You have no right to exclude anybody. You have no excuse because it has been done. It's been proven. It's a viable thing. It's a sustainable thing. You say, oh, no, no, you can't make money. You can't take the money back. You can't do that. 
can't say that. It's all done, not only in Bangladesh, all over the world, microcredit and all that. Passed all the tests that they can beat. Then why can't you do that? Because you don't want to do that, because you're not making enough money for that. You're a you're profit maximizer. Profit maximizer will not do that. So you need a different kind of business. I relieve you for that. So create a social business. You make a profit maximizing business, but you have the responsibility to perform the social uh, consciousness part by creating a separate parallel business to compensate what you do. That's a social business. So you'll be running parallel business with social business, supporting all those people lost their jobs, lost their income, so that they, on day one, they'll be coming and running. They'll not wait for anybody. They're still capable people. They're skilled people. They, they are the essence of the entire economy. They build the economy. You're not building it. You build cars and things. You don't build the economy. Economy means which benefits people. They are the, these are the people who benefit the people. They run the family. They take care of their family. These are the people. So the financial system may have to be had at their service. And then take the question of job. Yet it's a job-oriented world he created. I said, that's a very funny thing too. Why a human being is assumed to be working for somebody else? As is, that's the destiny of human beings. I said, human being are born as an entrepreneur. But the financial system doesn't behave that way. Financial system behaves as a few entrepreneurs employing people, millions of people. And then everybody has to go for a job. I said, forget about the job. Job is not a creative activity. First of all, human being is a creative person, a creative. And that creativity is snatched away from them by forcing them to go into a job. So revive them as a human being, as a creative being, as a productive being. Help them to become entrepreneurs. Why they cannot become entrepreneurs? Because finance will not support them. I said, we transform the whole financial system. First priority is to support the person who is creating his business for the first time in his life. Tiny, tiny, tiny business, micro businesses and so on. And then right. make it from there. They will do that. You can't tell me they're not entrepreneurs today. Because microcredit has shown all over the world, even the illiterate women in the villages can run businesses and perform brilliantly, better than the conventional businesses with billions of dollars. In, 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 all, the, all the loan defaulters are the top business people in the country right now in Bangladesh. Look at the microcredit people. Every penny is paid back on their due date. They are worrying today, how do I pay my back? pay my loan back during this situation. This is their worry. Not the rich people are not worried. They talk about the uh, bailout packages, dealing with the government, how big the bailout is. You have to pay me this, you pay me this, as this is a government business. Why I should be paying for you? If you can't run the business, close it down, go home. Why do you have to support, pay money, public money to you to build up those uh, industries which didn't help any, and you made yourself rich, but the people remain what they are. And it's all revealed now. We talk about our per capita is growing, our GDP is growing, and all the fun thing that we are saying. Today, suddenly revealed that despite the fact all those things were, all the stories were building up, people now are in the line to get relief, to pick up uh, food packages. So what we have done from social businesses that we created, now we are distributing food packages all around the world, country because they have no food. And this is the early stage. It will get worse and worse. And it's on the verge of famine and massive famine because there's nothing there. And government right. will be busy bailing out the rich guys than the poor people. Right, especially right. for daily, daily workers. Sure. Countries with Absolutely. daily workers, the problem is not that the people are dying of uh, coronavirus. People are dying sure. of hunger. Just hunger because starvation. you don't have money, you can't buy food. Absolutely. And nothing. so the whole hope I, I, I think you're, you're making a very valid point that there needs to be a way to support these entrepreneurs. And you, through the Grameen Bank, have done this for a large uh, part of your life. How can that kind of thinking be expanded uh, and made to happen more? What are your thoughts on how, uh, because the conceptually, it sounds like a great idea, but how can that actually be made to happen? To, change things. I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. What, what's the problem with the Grameen Bank? Why can't we have big Grameen Banks everywhere? Why can't we have Grameen Banks all over India? Why can't we have a Grameen Bank all over China, all over Russia, all over the United States? We done Grameen program in the United States. Brilliant program. 
We have over 150,000 borrowers, loaned out over $10 billion so far, with perfect repayment over the last 12 years in every city of the, every of the 12 cities that we work at. Wow. Why can't we do it widely? Because we cannot do it, Grameen America cannot do it because we don't have the formal license from the government. Oh. Just a piece of paper. Because that, those, that legislation is made for somebody else, not for us. We don't qualify. That's the only thing. It's proven again and again. They say, oh, no, no, you have trouble here. We don't need, any, we don't need anybody's money. All we need is permission to operate. That's all. Our money is generated within our own process, like Grameen Bank. The Grameen Bank doesn't take any money from anybody. Not the donor money, not government money, nobody's money. It generates its own money, just like a bank. It takes deposits and mostly borrowers own deposit, and then deposit from outsiders who are not borrowers. And that's the money we invest. And we have lots of money in surplus. So why can't we expand? So why can't we expand anywhere for that matter? So this, this is, these are the things which you got stuck in the principles, in the theories, and the banking that we teach in our classrooms, and all the things that our policymakers would be thinking in a routine way. So we have to unroutine all those things now unpack all those things and see what we can do. We create, so now it's a time to create social business venture capital fund. So that every unemployed person, every young person can say, here's my business idea, invest in my business. And I can run my business. It's possible. We have been doing that over time. And they pay me back all the money that we give them, they give me back. I give them equity. And I become a partner with this, every tiny little business they have. Yeah. And they say, you just pay me back my investment money and you are, this is be all yours. As long as I keep my share, I'll be taking money from you as a shareholder. But I don't want to take share of money. I'm a social business. I don't want to take your profit. You just return my investment money and you're done. And he understands that. She understands that. If I give him back whatever money he's given and I'm clean, it's all my business. And if I need more money, I go back to him. Investment, this is the venture capital investment. So he comes and gives me more money. I can expand my business. I feel secure. I'm not under obligation to anybody. It's not a loan that I have to sell everything, my house and everything to pay him back. It's a business. If it fails, it's your business too. So it's, a, it's a together. So I do, I'm not obliged to sell my house to pay you back. Right. So those are right. the kind of very simple ideas. It doesn't take art shattering ideas, simple ideas. So this is the time to try them out. When we are getting out, this is the time we get out with not the old things. Old path would always take the path to the disaster. We have to build new paths. And that's think, the challenge for us. Yeah, that is definitely, I, mean, I can see the point and it's great advice you're giving for everybody who is uh, going to be listening into this session. I want to go back, Professor Yunus, because we've talked okay. a lot about social uh, consciousness and you've okay. shown about how uh, there's, um, there might be another way, a different way to uh, invest and to uh, encourage uh, micro entrepreneurs. I want to go back to what you said about the environment, where you said we want to rethink and also make sure that we rebuild a world where uh, we're not destroying the environment. I want to share with you first uh, something I heard just a couple of days ago from uh, the Arvind Eye Hospital which yeah. is um, good uh, friends. We work. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Uh, hospital in India. And uh, I was talking to uh, their, uh, uh, the executive director of Arvind, uh, Mr. Tulsi Raj Ravilla. And he told me that right now they decided during the pandemic to completely re-examine their uh, capacity situation for providing care, every, every aspect of care. And they found that the bottleneck was in fact in uh, seating capacity in the waiting rooms in the hospital because of social distancing. And you can That's only right. have 30%. And so okay. what, they, uh, what they are now doing is figuring out ways that people don't have to be in the hospital for as much time. So anything that can be done outside of the hospital uh, through a phone call, for instance, like even the billing, could be done via phone, a lot of the counseling, et cetera, could be done via phone or via other um, telehealth, et cetera. You, you need to be in the hospital literally to be seen by the doctor. And this is a complete re-examination of 
what is the need for a built space, which is a hospital. And a built space is essentially the smaller the built space, the better for the environment. So this is one example of the kind of rethinking. And I was very curious to hear from you uh, about other ways that you may uh, feel that we could rethink the environment because one thing I'm thinking in the back of my mind is when we talk about micro businesses, micro business, micro entrepreneur doesn't necessarily mean that it is good for the environment. So how do we bring that um, part of the, um, the idea that you talked about also uh, to, uh, to meld with the idea of uh, investing in micro businesses? Right. Well, we are on the same page as far as the um, uh, Tulsi is concerned and what he's talking about. Uh, we followed them. We created our eye care hospital model after their urban uh, high care and so on. So we work together. They come and visit us to say, see whether we are doing it right or we are doing it wrong. So we work very close to each other. We, on everything, every thoughts, we are on the same page. Uh, what we have done also, we created a separate company called uh, Digital Health. It's all done digitally. It's, a, it's a not a doctor coming to you. It's all on the phone. There's a whole slew of uh, doctors sitting uh, 24 hours a day, uh, more than 50 doctors in one place. They take phone calls from all around the world, all around the country. It, it could be outside the country too, because a phone call is, a, the, when you subscribe this, you are entitled to make phone calls, certain number of minutes per month, and you can talk to specialists and so on on the phone. And they prescribe on the phone. You get an SMS message with their this signature that this is what the prescription, you can go and buy your medicine. We have a separate wing to deliver the medicine to you, uh, like any other uh, online businesses. So the medicine will be come to your home. So you don't have to go to the uh, hospital wait in line and all that. Many of the things can be done, not everything, many of the things can be done uh, over time. And you have, at the same time, you build up your health records. Everything is recorded. Whatever you're saying, this is recorded. And, and all the test results that you bring in is all recorded. So you build in the health record. The, the moment you call up, immediately your number comes up on the screen. He, he or she doesn't know. And immediately your entire history comes up in front of the doctor and doctor immediately start talking as a, as a known patient that we understand what you are. So this is it. Is. Now we included during this Corona crisis, one is a Corona checker, online Corona checker. You have a uh, app which you go through and after you answer all your question, your health information and everything, it comes with the conclusion, uh, you have a high risk, or you may have already contacted, please go and do this, this, this. Or you're not, you are still uh, not contacted by coronavirus, you are free from that. So we have the categories, A, B, C, D categories that we got, they categorize you. The important thing that you at least psychologically, you know that you are not prone, you have done it, you want to go back and do it again and see the same result, they change the result. Then you say, oh, maybe it's a funny thing that, they have not changed, it's still the same result. Or if it has, then you may in the meantime contact it. You talk about microcredit, whether they are conscious about the health, uh, health issues there. They have to follow, we call something called 16 decisions. And nine of the 16 decisions about the health of the family and yourself. And if you are a microcredit borrower in Grameen Bank, you follow all the 16 rules. Yes. About your child, about yourself, about your uh, sanitation, about your uh, personal health and all the things, of what you eat, all the things. So you are, fam and the toilet practices and so on, all built into 16 decisions, and you have to remember by heart all the 16 decisions. Anybody can ask you, what is this decision number 15? And immediately say, decision number 15, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it becomes integral part of your life. And we are trying to do the same thing in the United States. These are American women, and they're, problems are different. One of the things that we had hit is obesity. Very simple one. You may be poor, but you're obese. Your children are obese because you eat the wrong food. So one of the things that microcredit is doing to change their food habits. What is the use of making money and spending all the money for treatment of your body and your health and so on and so forth? So why don't you get sure? 
that this is the way you do that. So it's all integrated thing, it's nothing separate. We don't finance, for example, the microcredit to pro produce anything to smoke. We will not finance it. Uh, Simple as that. Okay. Talk about the banks. Yeah. They will love to finance the cigarette company. They'll love to do the sale for plastic companies and so on. Why? Because they don't have that screen of social consciousness screen or environmental consciousness. This should be built in into any business. Why should, who, who gives you the right to destroy everybody's life just to make money for yourself? This is a simple question. So those questions has to be now raised and built in and make sure we do not create the same world that we live. No going back. That should be the motto of the entire process. Thank you so much, Dr. Yunus. Thank you. Thank Professor you. Yunus, thank you very much. I want, you have given us a tremendous challenge, which is to rethink the world. It's a challenge for all of us. All yes, of us. If you yeah, work together, it yeah. can happen. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, I, I uh, want to again thank you on behalf of our entire community for making the time on a Sunday to uh, talk you. to me and uh, to share your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again. Very bye good. Bye. Good night. Bye bye.